if we can create an identity which is digital, then you see that identity could actually become one of the ingredients of enabling digital transactions to take place. Uh, because, uh, you know, there is a, I used to see an old cartoon in which uh, there, is a, there is a dog which is sitting in front of a computer and there is another on the chair and the another dog which is sitting below and the other dog is saying, oh, on the internet nobody knows that you are a dog. Because proving identity on an internet is a very difficult uh, stuff, it's a very difficult proposition. So we said, let us create an identity which is actually digital identity. So I somehow humbly disagree with my friend that uh, America has got digital identity and we don't have. In fact, America does not have digital identity and we have. So that, that should be understood very clearly and we have that at a scale. 970 million people of this country have an identity which is unique, which is authenticable on a digital platform, which actually every domain in this country, whether it is a mutual fund fellows or whether it is a bank or whether it is insurance companies or anybody. They can just don't bother about the verification of the identity. They are now absolved from the responsibility of identifying a person because that job is being done by Aadhaar and, and in a way which is digital. So you enter into a transaction and straight away you get the KYC, electronic KYC, which is your digitally signed document which says that this is the person who you know, it is my proof of identity. So I think this is this is very, very phenomenal uh, and very, very, very important from the perspective. And we at that time when we were starting Aadhaar, we did not realize, we realized the issue of inclusion. We realized the issue that, you know, it is uh, a lot of people don't have any uh, proof, documentary proof of ID. And therefore, we need to create a system which is inclusive, which means that you don't require one ID paper to create Aadhaar. Even if you have none, you should be included and you should be provided an Aadhaar because you are a person who exists. So this is the system which we designed. We also designed a system using technology to ensure that this identity is unique. So suppose somebody who doesn't have an identity comes to us and say, I am X. Okay, fine, you are X. So we provide him identity who is X and of course, you need to have some documents written by some MLA or some local fellow. If you don't have anything, then some kind of, you know, your certification of the photo that, okay, this is the person. In fact, we came up with the idea of an introducer, similar to what you have in the bank, where I want to open an account. There's somebody who already has an account. He can introduce me as R.S. Sharma, who and I can open an account, that kind of. So we came up with that idea also. So ultimately, a system is created which is inclusive. And, and the fact that it is inclusive is, is proven by the fact that you have 970 million people out of 1.3 billion. So there are barely about 50, 500, 600 million, which are, which are uh, 50 or 60 million, uh, how many, 150 uh, or, or 45, 450 million, which is left. So this is one part. Secondly, because it is a digital identity, therefore you can participate in any transactions. Banking, for example, now look at the financial inclusion as a, as a sector. We all talk of, you know, today technology has made life very easy and yes, that's true. Technology has been started being used by the banking system. But at the same time, I think the banking system has been rather slow in actually doing a financial inclusion to the extent it should have done. Somehow they have not realized that there's a huge money to be made at the bottom of the pyramid. They have always thought that because of the low transaction size, which is just about 100 rupees, 200 rupees, that is the value of transaction, average value of a transaction. It is probably not worthwhile, you can't make money, because if the cost of the transaction is high, then you can't make it. So let's, let's take the example, if you, have, if you are going to transact on the ATM, the average cost per transaction is of the order of 20 rupees plus. So if you are having a transaction of 100 rupees, somebody wants to withdraw 100 rupees, and if 20 rupees is the cost of the banking system, obviously it's not, it's not workable. Similarly, if you go to a bank and do the transaction, the cost is turned out to be about 40 rupees plus because of the, you know, all the costs of real estate and all that building and human manpower. So therefore, banking 
has not been able to become sustainable and profitable at the ground level because of certain issues because they have not been able to reduce the cost.